And joining me live from the United States via Skype now to discuss the U.S. controversial pullout from Afghanistan is former advisor to the U.S. Secretary of Defense and co-founder Vanguard Africa, Christopher Harvin. Good to have you join us. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm happy to be here. So, um, while um, lead, um, f or, or the leaders of the Pentagon may have testified in Congress, it does seem that it is the President Biden's own words that have put him at risk or, or put him uh, in, in, in a place of damage, of done more damage for him than even the, the, te the testimony from the leaders from Pentagon. Um, one of the issues here is the fact that they said they have told President Biden to leave about 2,500 troops. He said he has said in August that he never, he cannot recall any such advice. Um, you, by experience, um, working in, in the security um, circle in the U.S., talk to us about how um, the President Biden could have missed that advice. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see how he could miss that advice. Uh, the president acts as such as a CEO, and he takes takes advice from his, his senior executives, which in this case is his senior generals, uh, his secretary of defense, um, his his director of intelligence, uh, and, the, and the president processes that information and makes decisions. Um, it's very clear that the generals in the Pentagon wanted to leave a force behind, um, and it's very clear that the talks in Doha uh, helped to destabilize uh, Afghanistan. So the, the, um, one of the things that was also said is, is the fact that, um, because the president has said earlier that I've got the Al Qaeda has been totally eradicated from Afghanistan. But you know, in, the, in the testimony, um, I think it was General McKenzie, if, if I remember, that said, um, no, that they are still present. And the Taliban still has very strong link to um, the Al Qaeda. What does this portend for the US in terms of national security? So it's it's very clear that the Taliban has not been eradicated. You can tell by by um, I mean not the Taliban, but the ISIS has not been eradicated, and terrorism is still a tremendous threat. And I think even more than ever, uh, with the hastily pull out by the U.S. Uh, and the way it's done, it's destabilized the region. It's it's provided a, a safe haven again for terrorists. Um, it's linked, you know, it's the Taliban is very linked to to various factions within Pakistan. So now you have. Uh, various factions of, of Al Qaeda and, and other groups operating in the region, uh, which in turn um, has an effect on India. So I think that the whole entire area of, of South Asia, uh, Southeast Asia, has been destabilized. But I also think for the U.S., uh, it means we need to be more vigilant uh, with less eyes and ears on the ground, which makes this more difficult. Mm, and does this therefore mean that the U.S is back where it started because the u.s went into afghanistan in 2001 because of attacks from al qaeda and now it, it does seem that that is now also a real threat to the u.s so is the u.s back where it started in 2001 i think that remains to be seen because if the taliban in effect goes upon its word which no one thinks they will um that that they will uh fight al qaeda um, or they will uh, protect their borders. They have a vested in interest in things and not happening outside their borders that affect the United States and our allies from terrorist perspectives. Um, I do believe that that, that is yet to be seen um, in how the Taliban operates. Um, and unfortunately, the U.S. has backed off the Bush doctrine um, and decided that we were going to negotiate with terrorists and negotiate with the Taliban, um, which definitely weakens us. Uh, the way that we've pulled out, the way that Taliban is controlled, has definitely emboldened uh, our opposition, and particularly the terrorists. And, and that is the, the real problem, because you mentioned earlier about the bases that have been closed, um, some of them even taken over by the Taliban, the U.S. bases. And we know that the U.S. is not completely blind in, in, in Afghanistan in terms of knowing, knowing what's going on there because of the um, drone strike in Kabul airport as a result of intelligence. But what more can it U.S. do? Or what, what other tools are at the disposal of the U.S. in terms of gathering intelligence now that embassy, the embassy and um, the bases are closed? Well, we definitely have less friends on the ground. Uh, we have a less friendly government. Um, and so um, the U.S. has to be vigilant with other areas. We do have allies in the region. Uh, we do have capabilities uh, for listening, uh, for engagement, uh, such as you've mentioned. Um, and I think the operations change 
But the, just because the United States ended its war in Afghanistan doesn't mean that the war on terrorism ends. I think you know this is a marathon, not a sprint, and it's going to take generations to, to beat the terrorists. And that's the fear for, for a lot of people. We also know that the United Kingdom is also talking tough on this in terms of um, ensuring that Afghanistan doesn't become a, a, a haven or uh, some sort of haven for um, global terrorism. But what is the possibility or the chance that that is not going to become the case where Afghanistan, I mean, we've seen ISIS-K now in Afghanistan. Well, I think there is a haven for terrorists. It, it may not be, um, I mean, Afghanistan is a, is a very rocky terrain. Um, it's very hard to, to even engage there when we're on the ground. Um, you know, we all have uh, PTSD from 9-11, uh, where Osama bin Laden um, and his allies were, were, um, were on the um, ground there. I do think that, um, you know, these, the, all of the immigrants that are coming into Europe and the U.S., we need to be vigilant. We need to vet them. You know, they're not used to Western civilization, um, and there could have been elements of terrorism that infiltrated that. We saw that um, with refugees from Syria and, and Libya that posed a threat to, to Europe. So we have to be very vigilant in these immigrants that come abroad. Um, just a lot that remains to be seen, um, a lot to watch out for. We'll monitor the development and see how things play out. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, from advisor to U.S. Secretary of Defense and co-founder Vanguard Africa, Christopher Havin. Thank you for the opportunity.